Am I very late to do this tag? Yes. Are we still going to do it? Absolutely. Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to the Continuing Chronicles. Yes, I realize that I'm about three months too late to do this video. However, since I haven't been filming any videos since March of last year, and y'all have no idea what I've been reading or what I've been up to unless you've been following me on Goodreads, I figure like this would be a great time to at least kind of catch you up a little bit on some of my 2022 reads. So that is why I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I hope that you will forgive my tardiness, but I do love this tag. It's one of my favorites to watch every year and it was one of my favorites to film. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So question number one is the best book that you've read so far in 2022. Now I've actually only rated three books five stars in 2022 and I'm going to talk to you about two of them right now. One of them will actually satisfy another prompt. And the first book that I want to talk to you about today is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is one of my all-time favorite authors. She is just a master of storytelling. She's a master of character creation and development and I just absolutely love every single one of her books that I've read and this one is definitely no exception. This one is actually set in the 19th 30s during the Dust Bowl. So during this time, there are droughts that are sweeping over the Great Plains areas and everybody is struggling, particularly farmers, because they cannot grow their crops. Their livelihood is completely destroyed. And the dust is also making people very ill because it's actually getting into their lungs and they are breathing in this dust. So it is just a complete time of complete devastation. At the time of this book, we're following our main character, Elsa. She is living with her husband, Rafe, and their two children with Rafe's parents on their farm. And then the Dust Bowl hits and it just kind of devastates absolutely everybody and her husband takes it the hardest and he just kind of ups and abandons his family. He can no longer take it. He just ups and leaves leaving Elsa with the two kids and his aging parents who are of course struggling because their farm can no longer support itself. They're struggling to find food and keep their livestock and do everything that comes along with being a farmer and they just can't. Everybody is just completely struggling to survive in this and it is even worse when one of Elsa's children starts to become infected with the dust, dust in his lungs. He becomes really sick and so she decides to do the only thing she can think of doing and that's go to California where she is told it's basically like this, this land of opportunity where you're not struggling so much there is no dust bowl to worry about you're going to go out there you're going to get a job you're going to be able to support your family but alas once she goes out there it's just as bad maybe if not worse. And she again is struggling to support her children and do what is right for her children. And this book was poignant. It was beautiful. It was harrowing. You struggled with Elsa. You rooted for her, but you know that she was facing impossible odds and impossible times. And she was just trying to be strong and do what she could to protect her children and help them and give them the life that she wanted to give them. And so again, this was a five-star read. I buddy read this with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We had a wonderful time reading this um, as much as you can have a wonderful time reading a Kristen Hanna book knowing that it's going to tear you from the inside out but if you are a fan of Kristen Hanna and you haven't read this highly recommend if you are a fan just of historical fiction in general or just really well character driven novels you cannot go wrong with a Kristen Hanna I will always scream her praises highly highly recommend Kristen Hanna and then I ended up reading another one of my favorite authors Colleen Hoover and I read reminders of him and this book was beautiful I absolutely adored this book this book follows our main character Kenna and five years ago she made a devastating mistake that actually ended up leading to the death of her boyfriend Scotty. It's not a spoiler that's actually on page one of this book but that mistake landed her in prison and pregnant and so she was going to be in prison for five years. She ended up giving her baby to Scotty's parents to raise and now she's out of prison and she is seeking to have a relationship with her daughter. But of course, she returns to her hometown and everybody there is really wanting to keep her away from her daughter. They don't believe that she should have any right to see or have a relationship with her. But there is one person that doesn't seem to be completely ready to write her off just yet, and that is Ledger Ward, who was the best friend or very close friend of Scotty, who now actually has a solid relationship with Kenna's daughter. And so he eventually becomes close with Kenna and becomes a, kind of an advocate for her so that she can have a relationship with her daughter. So it's told from both of their perspectives and for Kenna, it is definitely a story of absolution, redemption. And for Ledger, it's definitely a journey of forgiveness. He, of course, hates Kenna for what happens. He absolutely blames her for what happens to Scotty. And at first, he's very much not sure if she should have anything to do with her daughter. So he has to work on overcoming these years of hatred and seeing past that and seeing her for the person that she is, the mother that she is. And he soon comes to realize that Kenna's daughter's life would just be benefited and enriched from the presence of her mother. But he is then put in an awful position because now he is kind of siding with Kenna, but he has been close with Scotty's parents 
for all of this time and now he's just put in this really awful terrible position between the two so this was just beautiful it was raw emotional um, harrowing in its own right and I very much enjoyed this and I absolutely gave this five stars so the next question is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2022 but before I answer that I kind of want to bump up the question of your biggest disappointment because my answer to one actually goes hand in hand with my answer to another so my biggest disappointment for 2022 was pieces of her by Karen Slaughter I love Karen Slaughter. Karen Slaughter is just the master of the suspense thriller mystery genre. She is dark and she is gruesome and she is not afraid to go there. Every single one of her books just contains something that is completely disturbing and I love her for that. So I was really excited to read this pieces of her which is one of her standalones. I find that her standalones are so strong but I read this and I did not like it. It wasn't necessarily the story overall it was the main character andrea oliver this is told in two timelines and in the present day timeline you're following andrea oliver she is in her early 30s she's kind of mm, lost in her life if you will she doesn't really have a direction and it is her birthday and she's going out to lunch with her mother and then during this lunch outing something happens an act of violence happens a shooter enters and andrea just cowers she cowers she can't do anything but her mom takes action and her mom basically brings down this shooter and so she's seeing the side of her mom that she has never seen before and things take off from there because her mom is hiding something something big her mom has been running away for something from the past 30 something years and now Andrea is about to uncover what all of that is about and that sounded so interesting to me and it had so much potential but Karen Slaughter decided to make Andrea Oliver the most worthless useless character you could ever imagine. She had no ability to do anything. She completely froze in any moment of panic. She lost her ability to speak. Multiple times in this book, I found myself yelling and gesticulating wildly, like, God, just say something, just do something. I was so beyond frustrated and aggravated by this character that it completely ruined my enjoyment of the present timeline. I have never before been so utterly disgusted and upset by a character in a book before. It just viscerally affected me how much I hated her weakness, how much her cowardice bothered me, how she just froze and lost all ability to speak, speak up for herself, speak out for the truth. I was just beyond frustrated with her and this whole book. And the past timeline didn't really do it for me. I don't really want to say a lot about the past timeline to avoid any kind of spoilers, but I wasn't really connected with the past timeline or the point of the past timeline. So you had a past timeline that was a little bit lackluster, didn't make a whole lot of sense a lot of the time. And then you had this present timeline, which was just absolutely infuriating. And you have a book that really helped guide me into the reading slump that I go into every single year. I go into a reading slump that lasts about three months. It typically starts in February, ends around May or June. I don't know why. I don't know what causes it. But right around that time, I just lose all interest in reading. And this was, I think, the last book that I read before I fully entered that slump. I felt it coming on prior to picking this up, so I can't entirely blame this. But yeah, this did some damage to me. I did not like this book. But then Girl Forgotten came out recently and I was very of course hesitant to read this because I was like oh my gosh it follows Andrea Oliver I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this but this is true character development because now this takes place I believe two years after the events of Pieces of Her and Andrea Oliver is now a U.S. Marshal. So this also has present and past timelines. You're following Andrea Oliver in the present day timeline as she is asked to protect a judge who is getting death threats. But she's also asked kind of secretly to look into the death of this judge's daughter back in 1982. Her daughter was pregnant and she was brutally beaten and kept on life support until the baby was born. The reason for this has to actually do with something that happened in book one. So I really do recommend that you read book one before you jump into this. But I found myself equally invested in both the present and the past timelines of this book. I loved following the journeys of both the character in the past timeline and then of course Andrea as she's doing these investigations and finding her footing as a U.S. Marshal. She definitely was almost like a completely different person from the first book. She was no longer weak or spineless or frozen and she didn't really have that inability to speak. I really enjoyed her finding her way in this book and this was just a solid story overall. 
So even if this had nothing to do with book one, I mean, especially if it had nothing to do with book one, I think this would have stood alone all on its own and been perfectly fine. So I'm really pleased with that. But that's one of the reasons why I consider this one of the best sequels is because it completely redeemed the first book. So um, even though I do recommend you read book one for the context, if you want to just skip it, you, you might not have a problem reading this at all. So definitely this was a solid four stars for me and I really, really enjoyed it. I also read Before the Devil Breaks You, which is the third book in the Diviner series by Libba Bray. This is a young adult paranormal fantasy that's set in the 1920s. And I'm not going to really say anything about this just because I don't want to risk spoilers. But it does involve teenagers with magical powers and they are trying to fight a greater evil. And this just really progressed the storyline for me so far. I didn't love the first book. I did enjoy the second book and this was the best so far. There's one more book left in this series and I am definitely excited to get into it. And then also I want to talk about a book that I recently read and then you'll hear about in my September wrap-up, but that is The Plea by Steve Cavanaugh. This is the second book in his Eddie Flynn series and I would consider these like high octane legal thrillers. I've read the first two so far and they all take place over a very short amount of time, probably like 36-ish hours. And Eddie Flynn is a defense attorney who seems to get himself into these issues or more accurately these issues find him and he's always asked to do something crazy in his line of it as a defense attorney and it usually threatens his family and there's all kinds of stuff going on and usually I don't love high octane books just because they are so fast paced and you don't get the character development that I like I need that character development in order to really connect to the characters and care about them but I really enjoyed these first two books in the series and I thought the plea was definitely stronger than the defense which was book number one I enjoyed the story overall of the plea but they're just so smart and clever I believe the author Steve Cavanaugh does have a background in law and he's able to use that to create these very smart intricately woven plot lines and I just love all the legal back and forth. I love watching that in the courtroom because in all honesty uh, it's just a game of skill in the courtroom and you you see Eddie just has all of the skill and is able to do so much in his role as a defense attorney and I really really enjoyed the plea and I'm looking forward to moving on. So only a few sequels this year but they've all been really top-notch. Very much enjoyed them. Question number Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. There are definitely several but if I have to choose one it's going to be House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. This is book two in the Crescent City series. This is her first adult fantasy series and I absolutely loved Crescent City so much. It was one of my only five star reads last year. In fact last year I had five five star reads and three of them were Sarah J Mass. So again another one of my favorite authors. I have not yet read this. This is a chonky boy. It's definitely something that I would want to read physically and sit down and truly sink my teeth into. I definitely Definitely I'm excited to see more of Hunt and Bryce and to just see where she takes the story. I've heard some not great things about it as though it was a disappointment from the first one which I can probably understand because the first one was fantastic but I don't really have any expectations going into this. Like I don't have any idea where it's headed or where I want it to head so I'm just kind of going in and enjoying the ride and loving these characters being back with these characters and just going from there. So yeah. The next question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year and at this point it is already out but that would be The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by her earlier this year and it was phenomenal. It deserves all of the hype that it is getting. It is definitely now one of the top notch dark academia I guess you would classify it where you know you have some college students who were like the best buds back in college but something really bad happened and now like 10 years later they're going back for a reunion and all of these secrets are revealed. I loved the way that it was told overall in the in the present timeline it's very linear but in the past you're kind of jumping around a bit and seeing bits and pieces from different timelines over this friend group's four years at college you're following each of the characters and this journey and I just thought it was so so well done it is definitely on par with if we were villains by ML Rio which I absolutely love and this next book that she's written I believe follows a cult and I am here for that again this is something that I've heard nothing but great things about I've seen a couple of booktube videos about it where they just absolutely rave about how amazing amazing and dark and brutal this book is and I definitely need to get my hands on it and I need to read it because I'm so excited to do so. Okay so next would be the biggest disappointment but I've already answered that so we're going to go into the biggest surprise of 2022 and that is actually my third five-star read of the year and that is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Y'all I didn't know what to expect going into this. I was a little bit nervous going into this but I had heard really great things so I wanted to give it a shot and this book blew me away. It was so delightfully 
violent and gritty and vulgar and I ate it up with a spoon. I loved it so much. This book is following two dads, one black, one white. They both have a sketchy history. They both have a criminal past. They've spent time in prison. But something else that they have in common is that their sons were married to each other and they both have estranged relationships with their sons. They didn't approve of this relationship so they don't really have much contact with their sons. And one day they're notified that their sons have been brutally killed. And this makes them both really reevaluate their choices and wonder why they couldn't just get over themselves and have a relationship with their sons who they both loved so, so much. And they decide to go ahead and band together and find out who killed their sons and get their vengeance. And that's what this is. This is a story of brutal vengeance, violence. And like I said, it's just dark. It's gruesome. It's gritty. And I loved it. This is definitely not for everybody. <laughs> this is definitely not for everybody, but I absolutely loved it. I loved seeing the journey of these two fathers realize their mistakes, realize their stupidity and their prejudice and get over themselves. And also two very different men come together and actually form a very interesting friendship as they try to get vengeance for their sons. I just adored this overall. I already have his other book, Block Top Wasteland, and I'm super excited to see what he does with that and see if it's anywhere near as good as this, because this really came out of left field and blew me away. And then next we have your favorite new author um, for 2022. So Ashley Winstead would definitely be on that. Um, also, I would say Steve Kavanaugh. I just talked about him and his high octane legal thrillers. Also along the same lines would be Victor Methos. I read A Killer's Wife in July and this is another legal-ish thriller. You're following a woman who is now a prosecutor, but at one time she was married to a man who was arrested for being a serial killer. And now there are like some copycat crimes going on. And so the FBI asked her to get involved to try to help solve this and they want her to to talk to her ex-husband, the serial killer. So again, I thought that this was really well done, really thought out. I loved all the courtroom drama antics and everything else that went along with that. Um, I do believe that this is a series there's at least one other book in this series that I do plan on reading. So very much been loving the legal thrillers recently. It is different than anything I normally read, which is unusual because I've always loved legal stuff, legal thrillers. So I don't know why I haven't read more of them um, in the past, but I definitely plan to read more from this author in the future. Also probably should give a shout out to Jennifer Hillier. I've read two books of hers this year. I've read The Butcher and then The Things We Do in the Dark. And I was really encouraged to pick her up because of Audrey over at Chapter and Converse. And I really enjoyed The Butcher a lot. Things We Do in the Dark was okay. It was, it was a four star, but I felt it was very, very predictable. I wasn't necessarily blown away by that book, but I'm absolutely interested in reading more from her. There are some of her books that I've heard are like her top standout books like Jar of Hearts that I'm absolutely excited to get to. So definitely plan on reading more from Jennifer Hillier in the future. The next two questions, um, who is your newest favorite character and then your newest fictional crush? I honestly really don't have answers for those. I don't really crush on characters or anything like that. And I have sometimes a hard time remembering individual characters after I've stopped reading the book. I remember more of like the plot and the details rather than the individual characteristics of each character. So I honestly, I don't, I don't think I have an answer for these questions. The second to last question is a book that made you happy. And I am struggling with this one, y'all, because I don't read a lot of happy books. I don't. And um, some of the like lighter, fluffier books that I've read this year have just been okay. They haven't really made me happy. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm sitting here just trying to think of if there's anything that I can even give you for this question. Okay, so I can't really think of a book that necessarily made me happy, but I did think of one I read this year that was surprisingly charming. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Yes, I finally read Jane Eyre. I'm probably one of the only people in the world who has never read this book, but I decided to go ahead and pick it up. I try to read like one classic a year. I'm not a classics person at all. I don't appreciate them. Like I think they're meant to be appreciated, but I did go ahead and pick this up and I was very much surprised by how much I enjoyed this and by how much I was charmed and captivated by Jane's story. I honestly found this a little bit compulsively readable. I just loved it. I was swept away in Jane's story and I really enjoyed watching her journey. She had a very hard childhood. She wasn't a very loved child. And then all of a sudden you just watch her find her way towards that love that she so very much deserved. So if I 
have to pick an answer for this. This was definitely be Jane Eyre. I'm very, very glad that I read this, that I can say that I read this. It's probably one of my favorite classics now at this point. So we're going to go with this one. And then finally, what books do you need to read by the end of 2022? Uh, basically any book that satisfies one of the many reading challenges that I'm a part of. I am doing several reading challenges. So there are definitely several, several prompts that I need to read. Like off the top of my head that I can think of, I need to read The Golden Couple by Sarah Buchanan and Greer Hendricks because that would satisfy a challenge to read a title that has gold in it. I want to read Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen because that would satisfy the prompt to read a book that is narrated by the author. My Dear Hamilton, I want to go ahead and read that because that would satisfy the prompt to read a book based on a real person and I'm very much in a Hamilton zone after seeing the Broadway show in June. Like I'm absolutely obsessed with it. So I would love to read that to satisfy that prompt. I am definitely not going to be finishing all these challenges and that's fine. I'm just going to do my very best. So that's probably what's going to be the better part of this year in November and December are just trying to read as many books as I possibly can to fit some of these prompts. So we'll see how that works out. Anyway, y'all, that is it for the mid-year book freakout tag. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of any of the books that I mentioned today. Also, please let me know what the best book that you've read so far of 2022 is or what was your biggest surprise of 2022 so far. I would love to know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.